Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be talking about Zollinger Ellison syndrome. So let's get started. So what is Zollinger Ellison syndrome? Zollinger Ellison syndrome is a rare disease in which a tumor develops in the pancreas or the upper part of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum. These tumors are called gastrinomas and they secrete large amounts of a hormone called gastrin. These gastrin secreting tumors cause the stomach to produce too much acid. This gastric hypersecretion in the stomach then leads to the development of peptic ulcers, GERD, and a great deal of abdominal discomfort. So basically, Zollinger Ellison syndrome is when these tumors develop in the pancreas or the first part of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum. And these tumors are called gastrinomas, and they're very special because they release this hormone called gastrin. And in turn, this gastrin acts on the stomach of the patient and causes the stomach to produce too much of acid. So this causes most of our patient's symptoms to be centered around that gastric hypersecretion or that too much of acid in the stomach. And therefore, our patient is going to present with peptic ulcers, GERD, a lot of abdominal discomfort, heartburn, etc. So this is, by definition, what Zollinger-Ellison syndrome is. The classical triad of Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. So as we mentioned in the slide before, we have that pancreatic or duodenal tumor, and that leads to gastric acid hypersecretion. Because these tumors produce that gastrin, which promotes the stomach to produce a lot of acid, so we have the gastric acid hypersecretion. And of course, if we have this, it's going to lead to the development of some ulcers, because that extremely acidic environment is going to start eroding away the lining of the stomach. And that's basically what an ulcer is. So this gastric acid hypersecretion is going to give way to the development of peptic ulcer disease. So this is the classic triad of zollinger ellison syndrome. So do keep that in mind. So what are the causes of zollinger ellison syndrome? zollinger ellison syndrome may occur on its own, so separately, and this will be just due to a primary gastrinoma of the pancreas or a gastrinoma of the duodenum. But it can also occur as part of an autosomal dominant syndrome called multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 or MEN type 1. The primary tumor is usually located in the pancreas, duodenum or abdominal lymph nodes, but ectopic locations can vary and include the heart, the ovary, the gallbladder, the liver and the kidney. About 25% of people who have gastrinomas have them as part of MEN type 1. So the development of zollinger ellison syndrome can also be linked with this endocrine pathology. And this is the case in individuals who have multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 or MEN type 1. So 25% of cases of zollinger ellison syndrome is due to MEN type 1. And 75% of cases is due to the independent development of tumors uh, called gastrinomas as part of the pancreas or the duodenum. So what are the signs and symptoms of zollinger ellison syndrome? So if you guys recall, one of the classical traits of zollinger ellison syndrome was that gastric acid hypersecretion and the development of those peptic ulcers. So most of our signs and symptoms is going to be centered around that massive acid production in the stomach. So the patient may present with abdominal pain, diarrhea, bloating, flatulence, burning, aching, gnawing or discomfort in the upper abdomen acid reflux and heartburn, nausea and vomiting, bleeding in the digestive tract, unintended weight loss, and a decreased appetite. So now we're going to talk about the diagnosis in zollinger ellison syndrome. The first approach is a blood test, and a sample of the patient's blood is analyzed to see whether they have an elevated gastrin level. And elevated serum calcium levels can also point us towards multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 or MEN type 1. So all of these patients with zollinger ellison syndrome are definitely going to have that increased gastrin level because these tumors are able to secrete that hormone called gastrin. So all these patients will have the elevated gastrin levels present. But only 25% of them, as we mentioned earlier, will also present with increased calcium levels. And that is because individuals with men type 1 also have hypercalcemia or a high calcium level in the blood. 
We could also do gastric acid secretory tests and they are positive if the basal acid output or BAO is greater than 15 milliequivalents per hour or the basal gastric secretory volume is greater than 140 milliliters. The gastric pH can also be measured and is usually positive if it's less than 2. So this is an extremely acidic environment indeed. The upper GI endoscopy can be done and because we mentioned the, these patients have an, a highly acidic environment in their stomach, there are going to be some signs of ulcers, maybe some bleeding, erosions, and of course we'll also be able to take a biopsy during the procedure. And this is useful in detecting gastronomas that are present in the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. And a biopsy can be taken from that site to see if that tumor is in fact a gastronoma. Uh, CT scans or computer tomography can also be used and these CTs can show the tumors of the pancreas uh, of the duodenum and they can also show us the ulcers in the stomach. And finally, the endoscopic ultrasound, which can also give us some images of gastronomas which occur in the pancreas. Treatment in Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. The treatment of Zollinger-Ellison syndrome is done with medications to reduce gastric acid secretion as well as surgery to remove gastronomas. Chemotherapy can also be used when tumors are too widespread to remove with surgery. So the medicinal treatment is centered around a class of drugs which are called the proton pump inhibitors or the PPIs and these drugs basically aim to reduce the amount of acid in the stomach. So if we don't have that greatly acidic environment, we're going to have a disappearance of a lot of our patient's symptoms. So we can start the patient off with some PPIs and these include esomeprazole, lanceprazole, panteprazole, omeprazole and dexlanceprazole. So for the surgical and chemotherapy approach, surgery is centered around the surgical removal of the gastronomas and this is actually the only cure for Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Chemotherapy can also be used to treat the gastronomas that cannot be surgically removed and types of chemo include streptozotacine, 5-fluorouracil and doxyrubicine. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care. See you soon. Bye for now.